the gentleman yields. I now recognize, recognize Ranking Member Torres for five minutes. Thank you, uh, Mr. Russo. One of uh, the two reports that your office has uh, publicly released is a 2022 review of the department's dispatch uh, and call taking process. Uh, one of the recommendations from that report is that the department should convert um, dispatcher roles from sworn officers to civilian. Um, changing those roles will you know, release some officers to handle the field operations, you know, where they are short of personnel. And it will also ensure that we have specifically 911 trained dispatchers to handle um, those 911 calls that come into the center um, and the traffic from the officer's request. Can you um, tell us where um, that recommendation is? I believe it's closed. Uh, we had discussions with the department uh, about the challenges to hire civilian staff uh, in the D.C. area, frankly. Uh, they, I think, have 28 dispatchers. I think 20 of them are, uh, are sworn. We would definitely like to see that move more towards the civilian end of things. But so we have received conflicting information um, about this specific issue. Can you respond back to the committee as to are there uh, sworn officers there? Has, have, has this department been converted to a civilian department? If not, why not? Can you just get back to us on that? Absolutely. Um, because again, you know, we want information that is accurate. Um, I would also, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, you know, with you want to request um, that you send us a list of, of those uh, recommendations that were closed based on the spirit of the recommendation or spirit of sure. the law. Um, you know, we want to make sure that what you have recommended is taken seriously. Um, on another uh, issue, I want to ask you about um, member security. Um, as you know, our security um, issues have more than quadrupled over the last few years. Capitol Police cannot be present in every single congressional district, and certainly not while we are, you know, working uh, during district work periods. Um, has your office examined the department uh, partnerships with our state and local law enforcement? Are there uh, MOUs that have been signed? And, and is there a, a process that has been created uh, to make, to write up those uh, MOUs? Yes, ma'am. We haven't looked specifically at the process on the MOUs. In other words, how does the chief determine the, the best uh, sheriff's office or city police department to coordinate with, or both in some cases? Uh, we are aware of the MOUs. We actually uh, are releasing or have released uh, a report that uh, talks about field office reviews that we just did in San Francisco and Tampa. And that, um, and you know, in that review, we talked about the you know, the networking they're doing with local law enforcement, intelligence community, and uh, things of that nature. And many of these also come from our flash reports. These recommendations are reoccurring themes, whether it's enhancing your outreach, your connections, contacts, and, and the dissemination of, of the intelligence. So, you know, we're doing more work in that area to, uh, to be able to evaluate the effectiveness. But you're right on as far as having the network with the with the local uh, law enforcement in each of your districts is is in, imperative it's um it, tampa it's it's easier to get to tampa from the inland empire than it is to get to san francisco for example in my district um so i i want to see um a process a real process on how we reach out um to you know local jurisdictions for example uh, my home city is about 25% under deployment every single day. Um, they don't have the officers that are readily available to respond to any incidents, um, you know, at my home. My district office is just the opposite. You know, it is located in an area where they are fully deployed, very, very quick responses um, to my staff when they, they have had to put the office on lockdown. 
Um, so it is very important for me that when we are coordinating with local law enforcement or state jurisdictions, that we look at their deployment needs and we look at it from you know, a perspective, do they have the manpower to respond? If not, what do we need in order for them to help us? Uh, with that, uh, Chairman, I yield back.